Hi everyone, Eric Alexander, Tecton Design here. Today I want to talk about something that's very important to me and that is what are we doing here? I want to talk about our technology. Talk about what the heck is going on with all these tweeters. Um, it's uh, pretty polarizing in the audio industry. Some people get it and a lot of people don't get it. So what I'm talking about is our low mass algorithm it's US patent number 9247339. Um, very, very um, important to me. So what are we doing? What exactly are we doing here? I have to go back about 20, 25 years to really give you the backstory to what's going on here. Many of you know this, a lot of you don't, um, that I am a lifelong musician and that I'm a drummer. Um, <sighs> I could stop all this tomorrow and be a drummer. Um, I love what I'm doing, so I'm not too keen on um, getting back into traveling and playing in bands. But over my loudspeaker design career, there was a point, and it was in the mid 90s, before the diarrhal days that we had uh, back with Ray Kimber, that I was playing music all the time, traveling in a band on a weekly basis, rehearsing with a band on a weekly basis, and simultaneously designing loudspeakers. And there was really a time that I had a literal epiphany and, and it really steered me and my design um, philosophies uh, from, from that day forward. And it goes like this. I, there was literally a time that I was rehearsing with a band all night long, three or four hours. We had a lot of songs to learn and a lot of songs to go over. And as when as I say rehearsal sessions, because in rehearsal you have a lot of time to to focus. When you're on stage, you just you, you're just trying to nail everything perfectly. But in a rehearsal session, you can really just relax and sit back and hear everything that's going on. So imagine playing music all night long in a live garage band scenario, and then going home and sitting down and listening to what I thought at the time were some of the some of the world's best hi-fi loudspeakers and having the, holy cow, what is this? This does not sound anything like what I just experienced back with the band. And anyone, anyone, I challenge anyone, you could go and have that same experience today. Call the hottest local garage band or go to the symphony hall and ask if you can sit in on a practice session and get next to where the conductor stands and listen to what, you know, what is actually going on. Folks, that's real music. That's real, real music. And shouldn't an audiophile want to have um, a real music experience? Not something that's dulled down and warmed down and liquid fluid sounding. That's not music. And so that was the epiphany moment for me, was coming home and sitting down and listening to loudspeakers and going, holy cow, what is this? This is almost laughable. And this is really, really good gear. So that started me on a a mission, so to speak. I spent many years trying to hone, refine, and perfect exactly what we were trying to achieve, trying to get that sound, trying to have loudspeakers sound like real music and sound dynamic and energetic and lively. When you go to the symphony, and especially if you stand on the balcony above the, um, uh, you know, above a, do a dozen violins playing in unison, I'll tell you right now, there's electricity in the air. You cannot capture that with a pair of loudspeakers. It's utterly impossible. We're working on it, but it's impossible. And so that has been my challenge to myself for the last 20, 25 years. Now, I'm gonna get back to the low mass algorithm here. So <clears throat> imagine having this epiphany of going, well, I just experienced something very real and, and just, just real and coming home and listening to a hi-fi rig and going, this is almost laughable. The, the difference between the two, there has to be more of a bridge created from live to hi-fi, and I wanna be one of the guys that do that. I'm not trying to take over the loudspeaker world. Everybody needs to know that. I'm just trying to push the envelope. Um, we own race cars, we wanna go fast, and part of the logic of owning a race car is how do we make it go faster than the next guy? So. This is no different the way that I approach my loudspeaker designs is that I simply want to push the envelope and improve, improve, improve. Consider this for a moment. A, a violin playing concert A440. Um, <clears throat> I just had this random thought one day of 
wow, that's, um, that's, that's, a really, um, that's a really interesting thing that happens. The violin strings under tension, there's a bow that's pushing down on that, and I could just barely touch that bow, light as a feather, and I'm gonna get a little squeak out of it. So the violin's gonna play the 440 fundamental. There's gonna be a first harmonic, 880 approximately, a second one, 1760, a third one, 3520, and we go up and up and up. So I went and bought a violin and I take the string and we measure it from bridge to neck and we can cut it from bridge to neck. We coil that up and we, we 440 is an open note on the violin, by the way, and we lay that on a scale and we discover that it weighs a third of a gram. Now we've really got a problem. And I'll tell you, I started with the patent long before I figured out a way to actually do this in a loudspeaker design because I realized that there was this extreme, and I, and I emphasize an extreme mass discrepancy. And here's the extreme dis discrepancy. If my 440 note and the associated harmonics, um, 880, 1760, uh, et cetera, et cetera, well, if I'm reproducing those with a, let's just say, an average eight-inch driver, and there's a, a thousand eight-inch two-ways out there, somebody's buying one at a consumer electronics store right now as we speak, and they think they're getting a quality product or a state-of-the-art product, and they're not. So <clears throat> the moving mass on this, we're talking 20 grams. It's got air trapped in it, and if we were to just take a razor blade and cut everything that moves out of it, and lay it on a scale, we're gonna discover really fast that this weighs 20 grams. Everything that moves is 20 grams. And this is actually a really good, I've, I've, I've sourced this. This is a good one. There's other ones that weigh twice, three times that much. Now, here's what happens, and it's in our patent. The, the measurement is in the patent. Because this, we're not even gonna to transition to the tweeter until four or five kilohertz. So these overtones are coming out of this that was produced by the violin. Um, the laws of electroacoustical physics say that these overtones must, compared to the 440 fundamental, they must be subtly damped and subtly diminished, lower in sensitivity compared to the fundamental. We could make this thing out of unobtainium and it's still gonna weigh, you know, five grams, 10 grams, but I just explained to you how the moving mass of the 440 note on the violin string is a third of a gram. So how do we get a loudspeaker to play 440 with a third of a gram? Now, I've, I've got three ways to do it in the patent, but I'm gonna to talk to you about the one that's actually the viable solution, the affordable solution, so you can get the best sound for a really, uh, frankly, it's a ridiculous price. So. How do we get a third of a gram at 440 to do this? We have 14 motors. This works, just think of it as a big, uh, a, a, a large driver. We're dealing with wavelengths that are this long and this long. These are long wavelengths. We get people um, flying in our face saying, hey, it's got a comb, it's got a comb. There's comb filtering, Eric's building comb filtering. No, I'm not, when the wavelength's this long, how do I introduce comb filtering in these seven drivers that are in unison? What we're doing is magical. So there's seven very powerful motors. Imagine a, a very powerful neodymium slug back here, exciting, curiously enough, one third of one gram. You can start looking at tweeter specs. They've, they're, they're 0.2 grams to 0.5 grams. They've been building them like that for, for a couple of decades now. And we get it done. That's, that's how this assembly works. So this is doing all the mid-range. Right here, this little guy here in the middle is doing just the high treble because we don't want it to comb. This is another way we do it. It's pretty evident. This center, this center driver does these all combined to do the mid-range down to 400. Technically, these devices start kicking in at 270, 280 hertz. They start contributing to the frequency response at 270 hertz. This is a little different. This is the center driver. This, these all in unison do the mid-range and then eventually, so we don't get combing, we transition the high treble up to this center guy. Now, how good does it work? Our little sibling, the impact monitor, was measured by stereophile. Um, you can go and look at it and of course, there is no combing and the fact is, is that we pulled off the best averaged horizontal 
bipolar response in the bookshelf stand category in the history of stereophile and all of their measurements. The best, not second best. Now, that's no fluke. This technology is real and it really works. Two years ago, the impact monitor was at the Rocky Mountain Audio Fest and people were telling me that the mid-range was perfect. Now, I've been designing speakers for 30 years. I've been a musician my entire life and never once have I heard the words perfect mid-range roll off the tongue of an audiophile or an audio reviewer, not once. Um, this is an $8,000 speaker and it sounds like a $50,000 speaker. I'm not kidding, I'm not trying to sell hype. It truly does. We just got back from Rocky Mountain Audio Fest and, and I gotta tell you, we had one of the best sounds of the show. And, and I'll be perfectly candid, I think we had the best mid-range of the show. When I say the best, I'm talking, I'm gonna put my musical hat on, my years and years of drumming and playing in bands and listening in studios and everything else. And oh, by the way, some of our, I mean, we have, we have Grammy winners are our clients. We have amazing musical clients. Musicians hear our stuff and it clicks with them instantly because they're living in the music world. Some of the next videos that we produce will have measurements that prove that this is real technology and that we are not selling hype and that we are marketing and we are exploiting technology. Thanks for watching.